The purpose of this video is to show the main functionality of the ONTAX platform. The objective of the platform is to connect a matrix that contains data with observations about the events that occur in a learning experience with actions that can be personalized for each student. The main element that the platform manipulates are the workflows. A workflow is nothing more than a set of data that is articulated in a structure we call a matrix and a set of operations. This first screen shows the number of workflows that are available for you to manipulate. The first step is to select one and open it for manipulation. And the platform tells you here at the top which one you're working with. This screen shows the details of that workflow. And as you can see, it tells you that it has data in the form of 500 rows, 65 columns. Two of them are key columns or unique columns, four actions and two attributes. At the top, you see a variety of uh, operations that can be done, like, for example, collecting a set of attributes that can be used in the actions, uh, renaming the workflow, sharing it with other users within the platform, adding columns, different functionality. The functionality of the matrix here allows you basically to browse the values and check that they are the correct ones. It also allows you to edit the rows, delete the rows, or even add in new columns. The main functionality is with respect to the actions. So each workflow can have a set of actions attached to it. And we're showing here four examples. Let's look into this first one. Suppose we want to send a reminder to our students to post in the forum. This editor here allows you to do several things. The first one is it allows you to select or filter a subset of your students to which this rule would apply. This filter is basically stating that I would like to consider only those that have the value days on line two, which counts the number of times they connected on week two equal to zero. So my intention here is to send an email, a personalized email to those students that haven't logged in by week two. Now, this filter is telling me that it selects 145 out of the 500 rows or 145 students out of my entire cohort. In the part below, you see the message and you see that only three elements have been personalized. The given name of the student, the coordinator name, and the course name. These last two are attributes of the workflow. And this one is basically very easy because you can insert it, pulling down the column value from here and selecting given name. Once you have this template, the, bottom at the button at the bottom that says preview allows you to see how the messages change from user to user. And of course, in this case, the only variation is the name. This is a trivial example. Let's take a look now at more sophisticated rules. Like for example, let's suppose that I want to contact my students and remind them of certain activities that are due for a lecture. Again, I might choose to send email only to a subset of the students. In this case, we see a more complex filter expression here in which I am selecting those students that have engaged with less or equal value 80 in four of the values of these columns. So basically what I'm doing is uh, selecting only those students that satisfy these four conditions. That's why there is a conjunction here. This filter selects 219 of these students. The elements you see underneath are the conditions. And these conditions are expressions that will be true or false depending on these values that you see here. In this case, this condition states that the video of week, video one of week two has a value, an engagement value greater or equal to 50. So this condition will be true when the student has engaged more than 50 units with that video. With that in mind, the interesting part is that we write the text and in now we select certain fractions of the text and we surround them. Let's just do that again. Let's remove this one to show exactly how it works. So we basically uh, insert the text. We, we first select it and then we click on the condition to surround that message. But this means that this message will appear only on those emails for those students for which this condition, video one active, is true. So as you can see, the rest of the email is written with most of the text surrounded by these conditions. But this means that each one of these sentences is considered or not, depending on the value of the student numbers for these conditions over here. To make it a bit more uh, specific, the button here at the bottom allows you to preview this message. So as we can see, for every student now, the text keeps changing depending on these values. Those that have a high level of engagement receive a message, and those that have a low level of engagement with different topics receive a different message. And these uh, emails are signed by the specific person, in this case, the unique coordinator. So once we have this um, message and we have it 
personalize with these different options depending on the data, what we can do is send these emails. And in order to send these emails, you need to first state the subject. And then select the column that contains the email. In this case, it's the email column. The platform can send you a summary. And very interestingly, it allows you to download a snapshot of the current state of the workflow. At the same time, it also allows you to preview once more the type of messages that will be sent. As you can see, are the same, are the same ones that we just previewed. And then we send the messages. And with this option, after sending the message, the platform allows you to download a frozen version of the matrix and the actions for you to uh, then browse at a, at a later time. Let's go back now and take a look at a different type of action, the personalized set of batches. This rule is very similar to the previous one. The only difference is that instead of sending it as an email to the students, what we're going to do is show or hide certain elements in a web page. We don't have any filter here, although we could use it to select the subset of the students. But the most interesting thing is that we select two titles, video activities and questions. And this little icon here, this little batch, is shown or not depending on the value of this property. So if video one of week five has a value greater or equal to 60, we decide that this video award or this video batch has been achieved and therefore is going to be shown. Again, as in the previous case, we use the preview. And as we can see, from a student to a student, these values keep changing depending on the values of their uh, indicators. And finally, with these workflows, what we can do is enable or disable this URL so that we can make it available to the students only at a certain time. Finally, the platform registers all the events that are occurring and allows you to browse through them. And it also allows you to download a CSV version of this. That's it. We hope you enjoy the functionality. And if you have any feedback, just let us know.